So now, uh, the third segment is what we call info bits. Info bits brought to you by Doc EG Live. Did you know that disaster resilience is the ability of individuals, communities, organizations, and states to adapt to and to recover from hazards, shocks, or stresses without compromising long-term prospects for development? Yes, that's it. And today, we have invited a uh, very well-known personality in to talk about disaster management and resiliency let me uh, introduce to you our esteemed resource person who is i think an engineer and likewise a phd holder Doc Maya. but i was so fortunate to have that she had he had she has joined us in our trip to singapore no, Engineer Maya Gabriela Q. Villaluz. But let me cite some of her accolades. No? Areas of specialization, environment, and natural resource, resources, land, air, water, solid, and toxic waste. Wow. Tapas pala magturo ka sa akin. Ano? And environmental impact assessment monitoring evaluation and reporting and also green infrastructure urban planning smart agriculture rural development renewable energy Tra naalala ko talaga is si dr claudio no uh, dr claudio si cora claudio and engineer peneda who are into renewable energy and transport water sanitation green buildings now environmental accounting and valuation of ecosystem services and also climate change carbon finance sustainability global conventions and talagang napaka complete ang kanyang experience and or specialization now for her professional work experience international well, senior environmental engineer from 2000 up to the present. Yan, yan. And then also International Development Agency of the USAID and the DENR. No? Senior environmental engineer of the USAID and also supervising environmental management specialist of the DENR was then the national pollution control environmental planner and also a civil engineer likewise working at that time with the, the department the dpwh no department of public works okay now working experience wow global and national programs requiring environmental planning impact assessment planning management operations monitoring audit and reporting but at the same time let me tell you that environment and social safeguards global policies in more than 100 projects in south southeast asia in east asia and pacific islands and africa middle east north america and europe ang galing talaga ni maya and safeguards advisor technical specialist on legal regulatory policy and institutional system for government private sector and academe and also civil society and local communities now but you do you know people probably should know that she is a prc licensed civil engineer a real estate consultant a real estate appraiser a real estate broker 
and our environmental planner. Ay nako talaga ang dami na pakiyaw na ata lahat. And a professional organization is she is affiliated with the uh, Manila Board of Realtors, PAREP, uh, PF, uh, the Philippine Association of Realty Consultants and Specialists, PARA, Peace, and also, and now with Prespi, di ba? But uh, let me tell you her educational background. A graduate of a PhD in environmental science major in industrial ecology in 1998 and university of the philippines and royal institute of technology sweden and ms environmental science and technology and international institute of hydraulics and environmental engineering alam nyo kung saan netherlands and ms environmental engineering and also at the University of the Philippines and Cali College, BS Civil Engineering at our alma mater, the University of Santo Tomas. Talaga din naman, nalulula ako sa achievement itong uh, doktorang ito. So, how do I call her? Doctor? Engineer? Environmentalist? Or a real estate professional? But without further ado, allow me to introduce to you, to bring to you our esteemed and erudite the resource person, engineer, Dr. Maya Gabriel Q. Villaluz. Hi, Maya. Hi, Maya. Kumingal ata ako doon sa pag-iintroduce sa'yo. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. No, 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 it's okay. You know, I just would like to thank you for joining us in Singapore. And I, I hope you would agree with me that we learn a lot, right? And especially when we met the Consul General, the, uh, uh, of course, of the Philippine Embassy, no? And when we have, we, we had our training at the TMC Academy. Okay, now, Mampo, after our trip, Actually, I have a lot of catching up to do with work. So, but it was really a very productive time, even if it's only for a short visit. And we learned a lot about uh, real estate, about Singapore's economy, about people, about you know how they do business. So it was really very informative with all the lectures and the site visits. I think we should do more of this, though. Um, yeah, of course, of course. You know, we are trying to do, we will do more of that. Pero except siguro, hindi mo nabanggit yung ating trip back home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, well, after all naman, we were, we were, we were required to, what, to alight from our, from the airplane, ano, and was ushered to a hotel because our, our, our aircraft developed engine trouble and so we were stranded for one day but it paid off naman di ba? we enjoyed naman more of the uh, company more of the camaraderie and i all in all i think that was a very good trip and we have to we look forward to our next trip na Ma, dr dr maya salamat kita kita ang dami mong appointments eh. in between yes, our trip ang dami mong appointments and you you managed to to have sumba tama ba yon <laughs> for a while uh, socialize uh, talaga din naman talaga alam mo si doc maya is a holistic person sabi ko sa kanya how how are you able to do that paano mo nagagawa yung ganyan uh, doc maya ano yan time 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 plan? timing or timing time management and, um, balance of work life so it's both our mental, physical, but also spiritual. So I was able to go to church, um, uh, Church of Sacred Heart. It was a very nice church. You it's went Filipinos. to Sacred Heart Parish Church in Singapore, right? Oh. Yes, po, with Filipinos. Okay, talaga uh, din naman. That friends. is why you are blessed. Not mm -hmm. only very intelligent person, but likewise a uh, knowledgeable in the in your area of expertise. Now we will be talking about disaster nakakatakot man sabihin pero 
para bang ngayon, kagaya nga ngayon, kahihinto lang ng ulan dito. Ulan ng ulan, kulog ng kulog, at nagkaroon pa tayo ng earthquake sa Abra and all over na nabasa na, 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 na natin that kumukulo na naman ata ang Taal Volcano and so although, marami pa, no? At nung araw ata, I think few weeks ago, we had Mount Bulusan, ano? Pa, parang pa nangyayari now and we are now very much prepared to hear your presentation. No, Doc Maya, would you like yes, to start? Sir. Yes, sir. Um, I have my slides actually, and I'd like to, um, yeah, present it. Okay, so thank you. Uh, may I proceed now, Paul? So basically, we're talking about a series, an environment series of topics. Uh, I kung malaw yung ating slide, pero. Yeah, so the first, <laughs> medyo nagparang uh, ng magnitude <laughs> dun sa aking title, kaya napunta yung ibang uh, letters. But anyhow, so talking about resiliency, Filipinos are very resilient. We are naturally resilient. And uh, sorry about the sound of the, you know, the, the rain and the wind. Pero we are very resilient because we are born in a country that has, you know, natural disasters. And one of those major disasters are earthquakes. So that is the topic for our uh, environment series now. So yung kung ating, um, the Philippines basically is really challenged with exposure to adverse natural events. And we are considered on the top of the global vulnerability ranking. In fact, parang top three ata tayo. Because we have everything. Uh, yun na nga, para tayong sari-sari store. We have everything, anything you need, we have it, you know. And so it is uh, incumbent upon us to strengthen our risk reduction and response capacity. Because this is our home. And even in other countries, they are compelled to address and face all the natural hazards because this is where we find ourselves in. Um, we cannot say, okay, can we replace the Philippines with another country or move to another country? Maybe yes, but many of us decide to stay here and approximately 60% of our land area is exposed to multiple hazards. So I guess in one way or another, um, especially with climate change, the movement of the wind streams, and aside from the frequent earthquakes, because we are part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, which I will um, define later, we have floods, tsunamis, lands, landslides, volcanic eruptions, cyclones, annual monsoons, etc. And so the best way is to prepare ourselves to respond, but not only that. How do we reduce our risk? How do we prepare ourselves to ensure that even with the coming hazards, you know, because some of these hazards are unpredictable, whether we like it or not, even with the advent of the latest technologies, earthquake would be difficult to predict. Maybe floods, tsunamis, um, volcanic eruptions, and uh, monsoons, cyclones, or typhoons, can be predicted because there you have, you know, uh, low pressure area, you have wind speed, you have the frequency of the, you know, the, the, the winds coming and the rains, that one you can measure. But with earthquakes, it would be difficult. Sometimes the big one comes and then the tremors, the after effect comes later compared to the others wherein you get first a low pressure area before you get hit by the by the eye of the storm, diba? So let me um, show you the Pacific Ring of Fire. So what is this? It's like a ring, maybe it's a half ring. Um, it is a zone in the Pacific, uh, covers the Pacific Ocean, you know, different countries like like Australia, Philippines, Indonesia. So you can see here in the continent no, of the Pacific, wherein we have the conglomeration or the consolidation of a number of volcanoes. 
So, di ba? And as you can see, among the different countries, it seems to be like the Philippines is covered from the north to south of volcanoes. We are rich in volcanoes like Indonesia. But for us, it really cuts in the middle of the Philippines. Yung volcanoes, so that's different pa from the earthquake zone, ha? So which I will describe later. So ito yung Pacific Ring of Fire. So it makes us vulnerable to the, the onslaught of volcanic eruptions which could produce earthquakes. Sometimes yung, yung earthquake happens dahil nagkaroon ng eruption. Not only dun sa volcanoes that is visible to the eye, but we also have a lot of volcanoes underwater. Ha? So as you can see, marami pong mga submerged volcanoes na hindi na natin nakikita, pero nag i -erupt. And so when, the, when all of this moves, then nagkakaroon po ng earthquake sa surface. Okay? And then this is uh, another topic, but I just want to highlight here the typhoon belt. Philippines is in the middle of the thickest typho typhoon belt in the world. Dumadaan po yan sa equator. As you can see, may, may arrow dyan, Batanes. So, yung makapal, the, the thick colored um, typhoon paths yan eh, is really smacked into the Philippines. So, we, we, we experience 18 to 22 typhoons, sometimes uh, low-intensity typhoons, Pero favorite tayo ng typhoons. So, isa pa yun. Another, um, you know, hazard to our to our country. So, let me just uh, define what Earth is. Kasi we have to go back to Earth science, you know, to just know the principles behind bakit may earthquake. So, Earth is a solid liquid rock. Wow, paano yan? Solid tapos liquid, di ba? I will explain to you. Um, yung kasing nag-umpisa ang Earth, magma siya, sumainit. Okay? It's a liquid rock, di ba? Coming from nung na-create na yung universe and then na-create yung solar system, andun na yung Earth. So liquid rock siya. Tapos ang universe kasi malamig. So, yung outer part ng liquid rock cooled and developed into solid state. So, yan na yung ating crust. I will uh, show to you a cross section of the earth so we can differentiate ano yung outer part na lumamig because of the coldness of the of space and then sa loob po, eh, liquid pa rin siya. So, may solid part and then may liquid. Okay. So, ang crust, yun yung nasa labas. It's cold and rigid outer shell. And very thin, manipis lang po compared to the entire planet. Because the there is heat and pressure. Kasi liquid pa rin siya sa loob, magma. So, kumukulo yan, mainit, very hot. The temperature is really like it can melt even the toughest rock. Yung, so, this is the liquid, and then yung ibabaw niya, may stress na nagkakrak because of the pressure and the heat inside, di ba? So, ang stress, hindi lang tayo sa sobrang dami ng iniintindi sa buhay, but the earth is also, you know, subjected to stress because that is the nature of the planet. Yung po ang ating planet earth, it's a God-given and that is what we have. So, meron po ako dito ang chocolate. Ayan. So, i, i, uh, sa slice ko yung chocolate. So, this chocolate is hard on the surface. This is, uh, ayun, praline. So, ito. And then, sa loob po, may soft part. Okay? You can see. Oh. So, ito yung outer part, matigas. Yung loob, malambot. And ang material niya, mas malambot kesa sa labas. Ganun din po ang ating planet. The outer part is tough, cold and rigid. And the inner part is liquid and soft. Pero yung liquid part kasi niya, dynamic, meaning gumagalaw. Uh, active, meaning yung pagbo-boil niya, yung 
intense heat, tuloy-tuloy, hindi lumalamig. Ang lumalamig lang sa labas. So, nagka-crack yung surface. Gaya nito, nagka-crack na yung, yung chocolate. Kasi, may pressure na. Uh, I don't know if I can see or maybe the <laughs> camera. Okay, kayo, di ba? So, nagka-crack na sa ibabaw. Ang crack na yan ay tinatawang plates. So, may sections ng planet made up of plates. They vary from small plates to large plates. So, I'll show you. Ito. Meron din akong plato. <laughs> Plate, di ba? Ayan. So, yung surface ng Earth, may malaking plate. May surface din siyang maliit. Minsan, yung plate na ito, magkadugtong. Okay? Minsan, hindi siya magkadugtong, nag-overlap. Okay? Pero hindi lang dalawang plates. Meron pang isang plate. Okay? So marami siyang plate na magkakasama. And they all consist in, you know, make up the crust. And they all run into each other. Kasi yung plate mo sa ibabaw, hindi solid. They come in sections. So they constantly hit each other. Even just from the sound, di ba? Makikita mo na kaya dynamic, gumagalaw. Palaging, it's moving. It's not static. Okay? So this is an, uh, drawing. So makikita mo the solid part, like in this chocolate, is, is hard. But it cannot remain to be hard. Because mainit sa loob. So that's the molten magma. And so, so here, sometimes nawawala yung shell, but sometimes gumagalaw. So, ito yon. So, just to compare the Philippines, uh, ito naman on the storms, but basically disasters, ano? Um, based on the per capita, well, China has 2.27 trillion population exposed to disasters. India is 805 billion. Bangladesh, 131 billion. Thailand is 76 billion. Philippines is 130 billion. But based on our per capita, we are the highest. Kasi halos ilang bang tao sa Pilipinas? Kung ganun, 130, di halos lahat pala tayo affected. Okay, so let's go to what is an earthquake. An earthquake is a sudden shaking of the ground, okay? So pag gumagalaw, yeah, ganyan, ganyan. <laughs> Sorry, I'm moving my laptop. Biglang, okay, sudden shaking, meaning... Meron kang ginagawa, you know, you're like sleeping or working or just walking or driving. And then suddenly you feel that something is jarring, ha? malakas. And so, sabihin, gumagalaw ang earth crust. Or the earth crust can move because there is movement nga in the plates, but also because there's volcanic action. It's sa atin naman, di ba? Ang daming volcanoes along the Philippines. So, hindi mo alam. Biglang may nag-active na lang or biglang meron lang talagang, you know, nag-release lang ng heat. Kasi pwede ang volcanic eruption could be the release of magma, okay, or lahar, or just releasing of the heat. Kasi sumisingaw lang kasi sobrang ng init. So you just have a lens on top kahit hindi lumabas yung mga earth soil particles pero lalabas ng puso. Diba? Nakikita natin yun. So, yung slabs of solid rock are called plates and they glide over the Earth's mantle. So, so I will show you, ito yung crust, yung makapal sa ibabaw, yung mantle, yung nasa loob, and then yung core. Oh, so, para itong chocolate, merong crust and then merong core sa loob. Okay? So, may mga technical terms, but just, you know, just uh, listen to yung mga terms na ginagamit natin. So, this is an example of the plates in the world. Ayan. May Pacific plate. Kasama yung Philippine plate. May one deformed plate that is in Latin America. Compost plate, Latin America. Nazca plate. And then may indo shaded plate. Okay. And then may Eurasian plate. North American, South American, African, Eurasian. So, Antarctic plate. So, ayan. Mga plato. Ang dami pa ng plato. <laughs> Sa mundo. They're all like covered with plates. But there are also like different types. So, so may boundary, may divergent plate, 
may convergent plate and may transform plate. Yan. I will define that later. Kasi itong mga plates na to show different movements. And based on a very long study of earthquakes in the world, they were able to determine the trend of the movement of the plates. Nakita nila, ah, may tendency palang mag-diverge, okay, meaning lumalayo ang plate, converge, meaning dumidikit ang plate, or transform, meaning umiiba ang posisyon. No, di ba? So it's a, it works that way. And in the Philippine plate, mukhang nagko-converge. Mukhang since active tayo, because maraming layers pa sa ilalim and iba pa yung ocean na so i will show to you later ang plate sa pacific eh nagbimit together okay so ito yung philippine fault line ang haba starting from the north batanes it cuts across in the middle of the country down to the south down to the bow tapos meron ka pang fracture so so this is just to show you um how our fault line compares to the surrounding Philippine Sea, Pacific Ocean, Philippine Trench, di ba? Eh, the best trench sa buong mundo is in the Philippines. Meron pa tayong, ano, West Philippine Basin, Luzon Fracture Zone, tapos sa baba, ayan. Very nice, no? But, of course, it's more fun in the Philippines because parang lahat ata ng regions may earthquake fault. The major faults, I will give you the list, but also in between, there are minor faults. So there's really, like I said, no escape on earthquakes. Kung may areas man na walang earthquake, kasi nga may prone tayo, mayroon naman tayong typhoon. But that makes us a stronger people. That makes us resilient people. So earthquake man, volcano man, typhoon man, we all stand and are strong, di ba? As a people. So yes, we're resilient. So, ito yung drawing lang of, a, of the, you know, cross-section. Itong inner core, basically, ito yung mainit sa loob. And then yung mantle, while less heat siya, uh, mainit pa rin. And that is the mantle that is closest to the crust. Ang crust, medyo manipis. And that is where, yun, andun yung plates. So, pag bumalaw sa ilalim, and palagi siyang gumagalaw, because that is the nature again of the earth, of our planet, um, yung plates, gumagalaw. That cannot be avoided. So, kumbaga, it's part of our life. <laughs> the earthquake is part of our life. The typhoon is part of our life. Volcanoes are part of our life. So, di ba? That's, that's, that we are blessed with all these things. So, anong anatomy of an earthquake? So, di ba nag-shake? So, may sudden motion along the fault. Oh, I will describe. Ang fault, ang tawag dyan, fracture in the rocks that make up the earth's crust. So, pag may plato ka, di ba, na nag-overlap, between the two plates, hindi naman siya magkadugtong, fracture ang tawag. Kasi basag siya in between. Hindi siya magkadugtong. So, that is a fault. So, yung sabi ko kanina, converge, nagdidikit. Tapos, diverge, lumalayo. Transform, umiiba. Okay? So, ang epicenter, yun yung point sa surface ng Earth that is directly above the focus. Okay? Ano naman yung focus? Focus is the point where the earthquake starts. So, ang earthquake, hindi po nag-uumpisa sa ibabaw. Usually, it starts from underneath. Kasi, dan dun yung umiinit nga yung mantle eh. Nagre-react. So, may reaction sa taas. So, ito gumagalaw. Yun. So, they make up, again, plates make up the outer surface of the earth. And movement along faults. So, ito yung fault kung saan nagdudugtong ang plate. Yun ang nagtitrigger ng earthquake. Kasi tayo naman, Mababaw lang kahit na sabihin mo pumukay ng malalim yung building. You cannot reach the bottom of the crust. So any movement in the plate will also shake us, di ba? So may seismic waves. Waves naman that transmit the energy released by an earthquake. 
So yung seismic naman, yun na yung energy na lumalabas. Pag kumulo na to at nag-shake na yan, may energy na yan na lumalabas. Seismic waves. Okay. So ito yung basic fault types. Normal fault is tension stress. Okay? So pag meron ka na plate, pag um umalis lang tension sa so parang palayo, oh. so yung 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 plate mo, ayan, magkapatong, tapos biglang lalayo, so may pressure, yun yung tension. Nagmumove. Eh kung nandun ka sa fault, edi eh mararamdaman mo yun. Uh, if you're familiar with the the fault line dito sa Metro Manila, Quezon City going up to Marikina, uh, when you reach some portion along um, the road of dito sa may Katipunan and going down, makikita mo na bakit ang taas nung isang cliff and then mababa. So kasi nag-separate yung fault. Okay? Nag-separate may plate. Compre compression stress naman, yung, yung plate humihiwalay, ang compression naman, nag-iipit, iniipit niya, iniipit. Gusto niyang pumasok, pasok, pasok. Okay? Tapos shear, shear stress naman, strike, slip, fault. Humihiwalay. Gumaganon. Okay? So, hindi po siya masas... So, tatlo. At least you can uh, identify three movements. Tension, compression, and slip. Okay? So, ito yung example ng tectonic plates. Ah, diba? Meron tayong ocean. Kasama yon And uh, ilang percent ba ng earth ang covered with ocean? Dami, diba? More than 70%. So, dun sa ocean na crust, nagmo-move din siya. Especially pag may volcano, malamig yung tubig, kahit pa paano may reaction. But usually sa oceanic crust, ang plate bumababa pumupunta sa ilalim. If this is your ocean crust and this is the where you have the volcanoes or the solid na plate, umiilalim. Gumaganon. Okay? Pumapasok sa loob. So, isa yon Oceanic continental. E tayo, we are, we are an archipelago, so we are covered on both sides, all sides, with oceans and seas. So, ito yon So, Lumihiwalay, sabi ko. ba diba? So, tension. Pumihiwalay. Subduction. Pumupunta sa ilalim. Transform. Nagsaslide. Okay? So, ito yon Ocean. Oceanic ridge. Oceanic trench. Ang crust. Transform. Transform fault. So, very interesting ang study of earthquakes. Why? Because it brings you down to the middle of the earth. It also brings you up on the surface where we live where we have structures where we you know uh, rely on our life on our livelihoods so how do we again address so just just to go back sa definition may stress kaya nagkakaroon ng fault and the movements break the surface so nababasag gaya nitong tsokolate nabasag okay basag ngayon, pag, pa, but it has no particular lead scale. Meaning, pag may fault, hindi mo masabi 1 kilometer ba yan, 5 kilometers ba yan, o 20 meters lang yan. ba diba? If you get a rock, pag pinokpok mo yung rock, magkaka-break. But then, okay, fault, nabasag. But pag plate boundary faults, ito yung mga nakita natin sa Pacific uh, plate and all the other bigger plates sa continent, yun yung thousands of kilometers. So, mahaba. So, so in the past 50 years, this is just to give you data, okay, coming from field box and other information that I have gathered in the, you know, uh, other government agencies. We have more than 15 destructive earthquakes and four major seismic events, greater than 6.5. Although may threshold sila, sige, 6.5 higher is strong. Um, yeah, I guess yun yung nagkakaroon ng destruction. Kaya nila sinabi 6.5. But of course, it could be higher or lower depending on the type of infrastructure. So yun yung basis ng destruction. We have 23 volcanoes that are active. 
In January alone, Taal, which is only 70 kilometers from Manila, have shown unrest and uh, eruption. And Taal is active, as you know. I think it erupts every year. Pero, you know, limited. So outside of that, Tagaytay and others are not affected. Pero depende on the strength of the eruption. But more or less, more than 500,000 people have been affected. So infrastructure and agriculture, uh, uh, billions are lost. So since we are one of the most earthquake prone countries, uh, and we have opposite dipping subduction zone, so diba, that, yung pinakita ko kanina, yung ocean pumupunta sa ilalim. Tapos dun sa kabila, ganun din. Tapos nagaganyan pa. Very active, no? There are five earthquakes a day in the Philippines, at least. Pero yung iba, perceptible. Yung iba, hindi perceptible. So minsan, may earthquake gumagalaw sa ilalim, nadidetect ng mga instruments na fill box, pero hindi natin nararamdaman. Ako, I don't know, I'm kind of sensitive. Kasi minsan, I can feel an earthquake. Tapos sabi ko, uy, nag-earthquake. Sabi lang, wala naman earthquake. Naku, tingnan nyo sa news and later maglalabas ang field box na, oh, nasa 5 magnitude, nasa 4 magnitude. Sabi lang, paano mo naramdaman ba? Anyhow, so yung Eastern Mindanao late in summer has 16 felt earthquakes per year. And uh, so this is just an example of the major earthquakes. But we had just the recent one in Abra. So this is to show you the active faults and trenches in the Philippines. So, makikita nyo, yung trench, yung kulay dark blue na nasa side, o Philippine Trench, o Sulu Trench, okay? And then, the others, ang dami, ano? I don't know, tayo talaga, embrace tayo. We are blessed by God, even with trenches. And these are the major ones na malalim, no, sa ocean. And then, we have the earthquake faults, the yung red lines. Uh, there are many smaller ones, but these are the major ones, yung dark red. So you can see from the tip, apare, down to the bow, meron. So you are very lucky again. Why? I did a study on mines. And what I saw was, close to the faults are very active and productive mines. So inisip ko, baka kasi lumalabas dun na yung mga resources sa ilalim. But anyhow, so just, that's my observation. So the Philippine earthquake zone is 1,200 kilometers long. It starts in Apare, past the Cordilleras, passing through Nueva Ecija, down to Quezon, Bondoc Peninsula, into Leyte, and then jumps to northern Luzon and southern end into Davao. So yun yung haba ng no, ating earthquake zone. Um, yeah. So at least 74% of Filipinos are vulnerable to natural hazards. Many people died. It caused 23 billion damages, 120 million since 1990. So old data pa nga ito. If you add the recent ones, mas malaki. Ang sinasabi dito, one-third of the national GDP, you know, is is uh, somehow affected due to damages of earthquakes. And it impacts our economic growth and welfare. But then how do we prepare ourselves, di ba? So the government of the Philippines has done a comprehensive multi-hazard approach to disaster risk reduction and preparedness. So that includes infectious diseases and others. And, um, you know, and everything else. So the main national disaster response plan. And there are response clusters activated as part of the different task groups. So I'm asking you and challenging you, what task group are you in? as part of the National Disaster Plan. And this is not only for government agencies. Ha? It includes private sector and civil society like, like us, mga private citizens. So like, for example, Metro Manila, we are the seat of the government in terms of economic and cultural. And the population is 12.9, 2015 census, 2020, mas mataas pa. Metro, Greater Metro Manila in surrounding like Region 3 and 4A include the uh, is has 21 million because of the rapid urbanization ang daming infrastructure buildings and housing na pwede siyang vulnerable based on a study done by the government if a 7.2 earthquake on the West Valley Fault happens. Ito yung tinatawag natin the big one. Based on their calculations 
there will be at least 48,000 fatalities and 48 billion losses. Okay? Um, yeah. So, what else? Because there are numerous earthquake generators, yung West Valley Fault is major. Uh, ang sinasabi nila, it is right because the last earthquake was 400 to 600 years. And they did a Metro Manila earthquake impact reduction study. This is very popular and this is accessible in the internet. You can find it. You know, it's a study um, uh, done by MMDA and JICA, the Japan International Cooperation Agency. And for them, it's like, okay, if we have this based on the study and model 08 scenario of 7.2, what will be the damages and how do we prepare for it? Or oh, diba? In, in that sense, maybe you can say we are able to predict, but we don't know when, when it's going to happen. But then how do we address this? Okay, so let me just give you a, the difference between magnitude and intensity. Pag sinabing magnitude, is the measure of earthquake size and remains unchanged from the dis with distance from the earthquake. So pag sinabing 7 magnitude, kahit malayo na siya sa source, 7 pa rin siya magnitude. Intensity naman describes the degree of shaking caused by an earthquake at a given place and decreases with distance from the epicenter. Okay? So usually they report the magnitude kasi yun yung size. So the recent one, July 27, 2022 at 8 o'clock, 43 minutes and 24 uh, seconds in the morning, an earthquake of 7 magnitude struck Lagamila Abran Garden Mission. So that's the epicenter. The earthquake, uh, 11 people died and 567 were injured. The earthquake was felt in 15 cities, 280 towns, caused landslides and power interruptions. Ayan. So these are again studies done by MMDA and by uh, the field box. Oh, how much? So nag estimate sila. And then there is also a executive order passed by the president of, on May 8, 2018, creating a uh, climate change adaptation and management disaster risk reduction cabinet cluster. Ayun. So mayroong uh, ina-address ng government on what is, how do we address itong kung ano man ang mangyari. And the mandate of this group is to review, monitor earthquake resilient plans, investment programs of government agencies, including projects and programs funded by the development partners. So you, again, you can find the study and uh, you know the executive order also it's available in the internet. You can download it. So ang tawag nila Oplan Metro Yakal Plus. Yun. OMYP. It's a Metro Manila Earthquake Contingency Plan. It lays out institutional rules, resources, operational arrangements for emergency preparedness and response. So meron tayo. See, the Filipinos are resilient. We're able to think about it. But we have to participate and cooperate. So guidelines for planners and builders. Based on the law, sa building code, buffer zone, 5 meters on both sides of the earthquake fault. So in total, 10 meters. No construction is allowed five meters on both sides of the fault. So the impact of the earthquake must be considered in all phases of the project, in particular during design and construction. So it has to be earthquake proof. The project planning decisions, project design, construction methods should take into consideration the earthquake hazard. So ang design ngayon must be eight and above to make sure na meron tayong factor of safety. Um, so, my detailed information available sa field box and sa Bureau of Mines and Genuine Sciences Bureau where you can find the hazard maps and the areas where there are earthquake faults, okay? So, let me give you practical tips. Before an earthquake, like now, wala namang earthquake, uh, what should we do? First is to plan for effective disaster prevention. So, we have information na itong pwede mangyari, how do we plan? The planning is at the local government level. And if you remember, there uh, a few years back before the pandemic, they've identified areas in Metro Manila. And for local governments, they were required to identify common areas where if an earthquake happens, there it is an area where people will go. 
there, there is an area where they will seek shelter and it is an area where they can access support from government. Oh, yun, di ba? Kami dito in Quezon City, I think our common area is UP Diliman. Yun yung closest sa akin. Um, so, know the earthquake hazards in your area. Follow the structural design and engineering if you're a builder or contractor. And then if you, in your house, pre earthquake to, wala pang earthquake, you determine the soundness of your building. So, tingnan mo, may crack ba dito? So, be, be, uh, observant. Because, bahay mo yan eh. Oh, so, tingnan mo, ito ba, nakatilt na yung bahay ko, anong gagawin ko? So, watch out for your walls. Kasi usually sa walls naman makikita kung, medyo mayroon tayong instability sa bahay. So, if necessary, you retrofit or you strengthen it. Yun, ha? Pre-earthquake ito. So, prepare your homes, your workplace, or your school. Usually, pag may, may heavy equipment or furniture, naka-bolt or naka-strap sa wall. Para, kasi pag nag-earthquake, mag-shake, babagsak yun, di ba? Uh, stability of hanging objects like electric fans, chandeliers, picture frames. Make sure they're all like stable. And then avoid breakable items or harmful chemicals, flammable materials. They're all put in place. Tapos may sign na kalagay. Uh, do not touch. Do not uh, open. Do not ganyan. Diba? Next. Kung, tapos familiarize with exit roads. Ako pag papasok ako sa hotel, ang first na hinahanap ko, pasok ako sa building, ground floor. Asan yung exit? Ayan. Safety officer kasi ako eh. Exit. Exit. Okay. Saan ang fire ex escape? Asa fire escape? Okay. Pagpasok ko ng elevator, paglabas ko na ng floor, yun din ang hinahanap ko. Asa ang exit? Asa ang fire escape? Asa na ang... Ganyan. We have to be very alert. Communication facilities. Palaging nakacharge ang cellphone. Anything happens, nagkaroon ng blackout, meron kang cellphone na nag-work and meron kang power bank that is uh, available to you so you can, you know, charge, you can call, ask for help. Um, first aid kit, okay, tapos meron kang ready. In, in your home, always have a bag. Meron kaming bag dito sa bahay. Ready na kami palagi. Tapos, nire-review ko every six months. Nandiyan na lahat. May emergency supply kit. You can find this uh, with the Philippine Information Agency and Field Box also. Um, what is in the in the kit? Yung first aid, may kang goods, meron kang clothing, water, blanket, Uh, radio, flashlight, batteries, etc. And then may earthquake drills. I know where it's, it happens in um, buildings that may earthquake drills. So make sure you participate in the earthquake drill. Huwag mag-absent. Minsan makikita may memo, earthquake drill tomorrow. Naku, hindi na papaso kasi ayaw mag-earthquake drill. We do, normally have that. We usually have that ng face-to-face. -face. Ng pandemic, wala. And then now we're starting to do face-to-face. -face. Please participate in the earthquake drill. It may save your life. Especially kami, we stay in the 26th floor. I've already experienced walking down 26th floor during an earthquake drill. Pag hindi kayo trained, mag-uunahan yan sa hagdan. So what will happen? Magkakaroon ng ano, di ba? Uh, accident. So with that one, we don't want to happen. So what will you do when during an earthquake? If you are in a building that is structurally sound or in your house, just stay there and remain calm. Why? Eh kasi baka may nagbabagsakan na sa labas, mabagsakan ka if you go out. So just make sure na, okay, nagsishake. Um, hindi naman malaki yung pag-shake. So maybe this is good for me and you've already checked na you're in a stable structure, I'll stay here. Quickly open the door for easy exit. So pag nagkaroon na ng shaking, make sure open yung door. So it's easy for you to run. Pero make sure you also are free from falling objects, di ba? So duck under a sturdy desk or table, hold on to it, protect your head with your arms, ganyan. Just to make sure na kung meron, kaya mong i-push out ka agad. Many of the victims of earthquakes were found alive because they were hiding under a sturdy desk. So make sure you do that. Stay away from glass windows, shelves, cabinets, other heavy objects. So doon sa office nung pag nag earthquake the first thing I do when I feel that the window pane is shaking, I run away from my window kasi pag nag-shake yan, baka mabasag na yung glass. So, make sure you do that as well. So, if you're outside, move to an open area para hindi ka mabagsakan ng electric post, 
or uh, other maybe a uh, tree or something or you know part of a wall na pwedeng bumagsak many again of the accidents that happened may nag bumigay na wall so people were pinned down and since concrete wall mabigat stay away from trees power lines post concrete structures move away from steep slopes kasi pag nag earthquake na unstable na yan pwede na siyang mag-slide eh mahirap nang sumama sa landslide it's difficult really to get out of it and if you're near a shore, move to a higher ground kasi baka nga magkaroon ng tsunami. And if it's a moving vehicle, stop the vehicle and go out. So do not attempt to cross bridges, over overpasses, flyovers kasi ang connection yan, pwedeng humiwalay and then so you, you, you'll you get into an accident. Post-earthquake, so tapos na yung earthquake, walang nangyari sa'yo. So I thank you Lord, I am safe. Prepare for the aftershock and go out of your building na. So, don't use elevators, uh, do not enter damaged buildings, do not panic. Dapat may presence of mind. Yun ang importante. And then check yourself. After checking yourself, check others. Help them. Check water, electric lines, etc. Chemicals, etc. And of course, baka may fire, so make sure you're away from them. So, if you need to evacuate, from your residence, leave a message stating where you are to your friends, so cell phone. Eh, minsan, wala nang ano, na bagsak na yung tower. So, how will you reach out to them? Um, always agree. If something great, uh, something disaster, a natural disaster happens, all members of the family know where is the open area designated by government. And if you lose each other, go to that center so you will meet there. Everybody will meet there. Mawala man ang communication line, cell phone, internet, etc. Presence of mind, I go to that open area. My family is there. They know where they're going. Okay? And battery operated radios. Ngayon, marami ng solar radios. So, that one, hindi naman mawawala. Basta may sun, then you can charge it. Um, I, I think that's it. So, I at the end of the slide, and I welcome questions. Doc Ichi, Hello. <laughs> okay. okay. Hello. Yes. You know, a lot, a lot of uh, messages are coming over, coming here, and one of the thing is during earthquake, you made mention that you have to hide in a uh, down under the table or there on there on the street that cannot fall. Yung mga hindi. Can you just go out of the building? Uh, yun pong isang dun sa tip, let me go to the during, okay, during an earthquake. Okay, so wala kang table, wala kang chair, and then wala kang sturdy table, anything to protect yourself except your ha arms, okay? Stay in the middle of the room, away from glass windows. Kung tatakbo ka, so if you are open outside, you can move to an open area na walang babagsak. Kasi minsan, you feel you're safe in the building, hindi siya masyadong nag-shake. Kasi ang shaking, you can feel either sideways, okay, or pag nag-up and down ang shaking mo, be aware yung sahig mo, parang bakit unstable to. Mag-start ka nang pumunta sa pintuan. Depende kasi sa movement. So if you have the access na to a doorway, go out, but in an open area. Kasi, di ba nakita natin even picture sa Abra, kahit ka na nasa labas, eh kung yung building gumanon, tapos yung kung saan ka pumosisyon, andun pa pala yung building na naka-tilt. So, napunta ka sa alanganin. So, so be aware that pag nagganyan na ang movement, up and down, up and down, Meaning, yung floor mo na ang gumagalaw, medyo tumingin ka na kung saan, saan ang pintuan. You, you, you slowly move to the door, or if you can do fast, you do that. Aware that there may be uh, falling objects. Kasi yung door may door jam eh, matigas yun eh. Pag sa construction, ang door nakaganyan. So matigas yung portion na yan. Open it, tingnan mo sa labas, baka nagbabagsakan na yung building o yung poste. Run outside and then go in an open area. So, yun po. Oh, ang tanong dito, Doc Maya. 
I Opo. live in a in the twentieth floor of a condominium okay. somewhere in Quezon City. Hmm. Uh, during an earthquake, sabi hmm. niya, well, I felt na felt down niya yung uh, earthquake sa Abra, no? Na hmm. parang nagkaroatan na shaking, and I was so yeah. I was so terrified with my family. Hmm. Now what? What can I do to protect our family? Because can we just go down the stairs or use the elevator? No elevator. <laughs> do not use the elevator because the elevator is... Uh, san, san na ba yun na nilagay ko? Elevator kasi uh, open space yan eh. Ang, ano bang humahawak sa elevator? Kable lang. Oh, oh, kable. Mga ganun po ang elevator. Eh baka mabali pa yun. Eh didiretso ka na sa baba. So very unstable ang elevator kasi open space. Pwede kang bumagsak na yung elevator. So don't use the elevator. Use the stairs. And when you use the stairs, you know, the first thing is presence of mind. Do not panic. Because if you start panicking, ah, you already reduce your your chances to be saved by 50%. Nagpanik ka na eh. Yung... Yung practical tips natin, nawala na sa isip mo, yung dapat hindi mo gawin dahil nagpanik ka, nagawa mo. So, so ganun. Uh, so, tanong dito, mind, Dok Maya, no? In oh. your, binabasa ko yung cellphone ko, no? Sabi niya, in your evaluation, Dok Maya, uh, in Metro Manila, when is really, really in your evaluation, because you are an expert, that earthquake will strike? <laughs> Can you predict? <laughs> yung pong ano, yung study natin kanina, kaya I think I want to have the control of the uh, slides. Because there are two assessments done by government. And I participated in this. Eh. So, kasama po ako dun sa mga uh, nag-aral nito. Um, the MERS, uh, asan na ba yung MERS? It stands for Metro Manila Earthquake Impact Reduction Study by Philbox, uh, Philbox and MMDA, it says that there could be potential to, to cause severe damage. Okay, so Metro Manila. Kasi ang last was 400 to 600 years. Meaning, yung West Valley Fault has moved four times in the last 1,400 years. So right na siyang gumalaw. Ibig sabihin, matagal na siyang, may pressure na, may stress na sa ilalim, hindi, hindi pa siya gumagalaw. Lahat po ng plates gumalaw na, ito na lang West Valley ang hindi pa. So, we are not predicting na baka bukas, baka next month, baka next year. We cannot. Only God knows what's gonna happen. The best is, we know na merong, uh, ano, merong potential. Sabi dito, na yeah, sabi dito Doc Maya, there was a, uh, a release by the P-Box before hmm. the pandemic saying okay. that if a 8.5 to 9 Richter strike Metro Manila, so many will die and also so many buildings are will collapse. What can you say about it? Yes po. That was part of the study. That is true. Part of the study, no? Because you sexually doom. Yes po. It could happen. It could happen. Kaya tinatanong niya kung well, uh, how can how can you what can you how can you do what can you do in order to to avoid such thing. Eh ngayon ang building natin eh may roller coaster na eh, di ba? Meron na siyang roller. May rollers po sa ilalim. Um, like the West di man di Marikina Fault, di ba? Hindi pa gumagalaw yan ano? Eh ang dami-daming okay. mga lahan diyan. Is it safe to live in the in very near Marikina Valley Fault? Sir, pag ano, uh, if you are not a re yet a resident there, maybe I suggest um, to choose another site <laughs> para <laughs> kampante ka na wala ka dun sa West Valley Fall. Um, and if you are there already, always check the structure of your house or your building. Kasi may mga buildings po, they come out with a post-evaluation of the structural integrity of a building, ask that from the homeowners association or the building administrator. They are required to issue that. After every earthquake, yung pong uh, building namin dito, 
nag-issue ka agad after the earthquake ng structural integrity. So, us who are not uh, living in tall buildings, yun sinabi ko po, be familiar with cracks. Ang cracks hindi lang sa structure ng bahay mo. Ang cracks could happen on the ground. Minsan sa garden, yeah. may uh-huh. ako, bakit may crack dito? Sabi ko, sundan mo ang crack. Okay, sundan mo. Tingnan mo kung saan papunta. Nag-crack, baka umulan lang kasi gumuho ang soil. So, nagka-crack or nagkabutas. Nakita Dahil mo yung crack na nangyari sa Abra, no? Ang laki ng bakakwan. Opo. Malaki okay. ang nangyari. But, but yun nga, ang, I haven't talked to anybody from Abra. Lalo na dun sa, sa la, ano, Lagang Ilang, yung town. I don't know if there were cracks before. Dapat Meron sabihin, na namang upper shock ngayon eh. Very, pumasok ang message sa cellphone ko. May 3.5 ata sa aftershock sa Abra na naman. Hindi ko alam kung saan. Yes po. So yun yung sinabi ko kaninang fractures. How many well, aftershock ang inaasahan natin? Hindi po natin masabi kasi depende sa, sa fractures na nangyari. At dapat makita nila yung fra- fractures na yun. Dapat ang LGU, kasi part ng project ng government is to assign disaster risk teams. So, may mga task force yan, bawat LGU. Now, if your LGU has it or does not have it, as a private citizen, demand from your LGU na magkaroon ng response team and to inform the citizens kung ano ang status ng lupa. Lalo na dun sa mga upland na pwedeng prone sa uh-huh. landslide. Uh-huh. What can you say about Baguio? Sabi ni uh, Glo. Uh, yeah. Well, Baguio is a very nice place. It's our favorite <laughs> vacation place. We go to Baguio regularly. Um, before, I, I've seen Baguio many years ago when I was still uh, in elementary yung, and high school. Ito, I've yung seen Hyatt Baguio Hotel, now. No? Uh, yeah, I've seen Baguio now. And uh, I feel very sorry for the the young generation who did not experience the old glory of Baguio. When you enter Baguio, ang, amoy mo na kaagad yung Baguio Pines. Ngayon, maaamoy mo yung tambucho. And then, <laughs> we, <work. laughs> we, we go there regular, every three months po, nasa Baguio kami. Yung Uh-oh. anak ko nag-aaral sa UP Baguio. Wala na bang, wala na bang Pines view? Wala na bang naaamoy na Pines? <laughs> Konti na lang po, pumapasok ka pa dun sa ano, sa loob ng mga exclusive subdivisions, may mga pine trees. But more than the the scent, the beautiful, fragrant, fresh scent of the pines is the is the use of the the roots of the pines to control erosion, to make your land stable. Eh marami na pong structures na nandoon minsan Um, napaka-naro na ng road, papasok ka, nagugulat. Oh, may dapat pala doon. Oh, one way na to. Oh, papasok pa pala doon. And so, ang kalaban po ng loss of erosion, loss of erosion control is, number one, the loss of the natural vegetation that hold the land or the soil uh, make it stable. Number one. Number two, dahil wala ka ng puno, yung ulan na bumabag sa hindi na rin na-absorb halos ng lupa kasi andun na yung sementadong kalsada, sementadong subdivision, sementadong gano'n. And so the drainage becomes a problem. And so pag poor drainage, it again affects your the stability of your land. So tapos pag steep slope pa, you need more engineering control to ensure na hindi mag-slide kasi prone siya to landslide dahil steep. Kung flat lang yan, okay lang yan. Kahit mag-earthquake, wala namang babagsak. Pero kung steep, yan ang tendency na mawala ang balance, pwedeng mag-drop. So yun po ang kailangan pong bantayan sa Baguio. How to do erosion control, to do proper drainage, to ensure na bumalik ang vegetation, so that you know there will be less damages. In fact, kahit hindi po Baguio, kahit hindi steep, but dense, yan na po ang pwedeng maging source of damage. Kasi pag dense, dikit-dikit ang mga bahay, dikit-dikit ang mga building. 
pag may isa lang bumagsak, parang domino, sunod-sunod. So, pag mostly dense, and that's why Metro Manila has very high risk, kasi may mga areas po tayong dikit-dikit, pag ang isa lang ang maging unstable, kahit stable yung isa, pero mabigat na yung pumatong sa kanya, pwede na din po siyang ma- mm-hmm. ma- well, okay. Anong dito, Doc Maya? Uh, well, Mount uh, Bayon Volcano, I think several years ago, no? Uh, erupted and uh, the residents were asked within the 10 kilometer radius yes. why was it so when oh, yeah. in fact hindi oh. naman sila affected oh no that's that's a very good question actually kasi yung yung pag nag erupt ang volcano and i'm familiar with my own because i'm uh, raised in bicol <laughs> i have seen my own with my own eyes erupting very beautiful but very dangerous and uh, lots of farmlands are affected Pag nag po ang volcano, and kagaya nga nung na-mention natin kanina, may molten magma sa ilalim, nag-release siya ng pressure and heat. Hindi lang dun sa mouth ng volcano lalabas yun. Ito yung cone, lahat po yan sa loob. Pwedeng magkaroon ng sanga. Parang yung fracture, hindi mo malaman kung saan. I mean, nobody has entered the mouth of a volcano. More or less, we can see the heat coming from some major streams under the volcano. But pwede po kasi may lumabas na exhaust, may sumingaw. And so if you are within the 10 kilometers, kasi yun yung base ng volcano, ay eh, nagkataon dun sumingaw, pwede kang maapektuhan. And it's not only the magma, the lahar, or the uh, lava, but it's also the sulfur and the other toxic gases that is released from under the earth. So pag sumingaw po yan, lalabas na lang yan sa lupa. Kahit hindi mainit, pero yung singaw lang nakakamatay po. It's very dangerous. Very dangerous. Oo nga, oo nga. No? Ang galing. Nakalagay di, sabi dito, Maya, Doc Maya, sabi, you have explained thoroughly earthquakes. What about typhoon? Sabi ko, next na yun. <laughs> <laughs> very, very nice topic. <laughs> next. Oh, oh. Uh, Siguro, we will call you again some other time. Siguro, if you are not too busy to talk about typhoon. Kasi typhoon pro ng Pilipinas, eh, no? Correct. And I know that uh, now you have prepared something as regards to earthquakes. But siguro, it's some other time when you are free. Siguro, in the next uh, month or so, then we request, sana, we could be very happy if you could talk about, uh, typhoon. well, typhoon. Eh, alam mo naman ang Pilipina, ay pong belt ito eh, di ba? Yes po. Very oh, interesting oh. topic. So therefore, tanggal, so therefore, tanggalin mo na yung, yung presentation. Yan. So, I, I'm so happy but uh, before you leave, join me ha, Doc Maya, before you leave, give your short party message. Do, join me in greeting, kaibigan natin to, no? Si uh, board member Paeng Pahardo, happy, happy birthday, and also Irene Lavala Opresio, birthday, or Igotu Malyonga, happy birthday. Ano ba pa tayo? Parang music. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Ito na ba? Okay, happy birthday, Igotu. Uh, board member Paeng, happy birthday. And Irene Opresio, happy, happy birthday. Ayan. Okay. So now, uh, ang ganda naman ng mga explanation. Ang dami pang questions dito, pero almost pare-pareho naman. Talking about protection in, in when earthquake struck. And isang mga question dito, Maya, yung sa West Valley Pole. Talagang kailan daw ito magmumove? Sabi ko, hindi na. Ano bang alam natin dyan? <laughs> Ayan, typically, malapit na ba? Basta, ang ano lang po niyan, pag na-feel na, na natin na may shaking of the ground, presence of mind. And then, not to panic. Okay? And then, move away na nga. Yun yung sinabi ko yung kanina, yung may mga practical tips natin. Because we don't know when it's gonna happen. Sometimes ako nga eh. Pag nagda-drive o pag nagpupunta lang sa pag nag-ocular ng ating projects, yun ang kagad na iisip ko, is this structurally sound? I have to talk to the contractor. Even when I attend mga meetings, minsan ang saya-saya, gaya niyan, may mga uh, religious events. 
na happy happy tumatalon yung mga tao tapos nararamdaman ko oh no unusual shaking of the building alam nyo kahit hindi pa tapos ang event tatakbo na ako dun sa admin office tatanungin ko excuse me po pwede ba makita yung plano nyo kasi may Pero, alam mo nakikita mo sa screen ano? ang dami nagpapay thank you sa'yo si Doc Maya Doc Maya thank you daw si Eric Manalo si Uh, eh, Digano, si Nong Liganor, si Dr. Kalayag, ang dami-dami mm -hmm. nag-say na thank you sa iyo, natuto daw sila. And also, the uh, Rebap Mandaluyong President, Benice D, is with us. You know, Nagpapatengko sila. And mm -hmm. si Maria Teresa Jeronimo from Caloacan City, thank you daw. Malu Isagire. I think Malu now is in uh, Australia. And also Russell Ojeda and Marisa De Leon. And of course, from Cebu, we have uh, June Golchano. Ayan. And also, nanonood din sa atin si, si Hill Escudero, engineer Hill Escudero. At sabi niya, galing-galing naman ni Doc Maya. And A. June Golchano Jr. Banggitin ko ito ha, kasi binabati ka eh. Edna Tumala. And... Yung kasama natin, tanda mo, Maya, si Marisol. <laughs> wow, si Sol. Hi, Sol. Oo, oh, si Sol. Oh, hello, Sol. Marisol. Si Sol. Yeah. Uh, pero ang kanyang kwan e eh, Abuel. Ayan, si Nas Dugazan. And ang aking pinakamasayang presidente ng PMRB, si Ashley Balera. Kumusta ka daw? And of course, one of the beautiful faces in the industry, Catherine, Kate, Dalaga, Garcia. Yeah. Hi, Kate. Yes. Dalaga din naman. Kate. And Butch, Manis, Antonio, says that we could have been there. Learn yes. a lot. Butch. And also, Jerry Aguilar. Sabi niya, ang masaya daw siya na maming natutuhan. Eh, si Cynthia Manalo, nagpa-thank you din sa Leo, di ba? Si yes. Annabelle Corpus also says, thank you, Doc. And, uh, well... Ayan. At of course, Engineer Escudero and ang BFF natin, always here, si uh, Nong Liganor, si Mel B. Dorado Satang, si Janet Mercado, at si Dong, kasama natin yan. Ano? And also, I would like to, to singly uh, mention Dr. Noni no? Leonor Kalaya, the Managing Director of Asian Center of Entrepreneurship and Real Estate, a, very, a true and true educator. Okay, Dr. Kalaya. Now, uh, tsaka, nakalimutan ko, si Claire Kiray pala from Pampanga and uh, Nina David Serrano. Well, hello from Pampanga. Nanonood din sa atin. Now, uh, Before anything else, before we let you go, Doc Maya, can you give us a parting message on how people can avoid and what they can do in in times of disaster? Okay, thank you, Doc. Um, the the only thing I can say is let's always pray, okay? Because when we pray and ask God to protect us, sometimes your intuition natin kicks in. And so when when we feel that this is good or not good for me, rely on your intuition and don't panic. Yun yung po talaga ang mangyayari. Because if you find yourself in an extreme condition, buti kung normal lang and gagaya nang nangyari sa Abra, we felt it here. Ako yung laptop ko gumaga noon sa Biko Earth. <laughs> talaga? <laughs> Opo. But then the present so mind. First, okay, ito yung table ko, it's sturdy, my door is open. Okay, and then I I already called out to the family members. May earthquake, ready kayo? Tatakbo ba tayo sa stairs? Get my cue. Itong gagawin natin. So somebody has to be in command. But kung wala yung in, somebody in command, we have to be in command. We have to be prepared. So yun lang po. Prepare always, and yun. Just okay, pray. Doc Maya. Marami marami salamat. And uh, uh, because of, can you? We I would like to give you a short. Uh, appreciation uh, certificate no uh, putting our sincerest gratitude in your being with us this afternoon talaga naman ang dami namin natutuhan sa iyo nakapasok na ba hindi pa ayan ata yung certificate mo and we can email it to you yes 
Ayan, ayan, certificate, no? Engineer Maya Gabriela Villaluz talking you, about disaster management and resiliency. Salamat po. Okay. And we hope that we have educated the, the, the viewers. And alam ko, marami silang natutuhan kasi ang daming questions eh. However, in the interest of time, we cannot, will not be able to almost uh, 5 o'clock but anyway, maraming maraming salamat. I know that you're still going to the dentist, di ba? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, pero ito pala, oh, si Luz. Sabi ito pala, from Abra, oh. Si Luz Marie Siares from Abra. Okay. Nanonood sa iyo. <laughs> okay, okay. Nanonood sa atin. Hello, yeah. Luz from Abra. Kaya, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you can collect the questions and then you can send it to me if I can Okay, help. we will do that. We'll do that and we'll send it to you. In the meantime, yeah. thank you so much and hope to see you again in our reunion. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank My you. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.